This is probably one of my favorite blogs. I haven't visited in a while, so let's throw this up on the screen. It's a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer, but I think that it is worth spending some time on with this cast. Share screen, window, boom, boom. All right. So if you don't know who Jack is, he's a good dude. Uh, he's kind of like a leave me alone sort of guy. Um, I don't care. Okay. So you you can find this if you search it anytime. I'm just going to read it out. So just, you know, so just roll with me on this. All right. This essay was originally published in 2014, but it's no longer available. A reader recently requested the link. I thought I'd reshare it. Oh, it looks like he took it down. Anyway, these three magic words could end so many arguments. Most appeals in the name of social justice rely on an underlying assumption of universal altruism. They assume that if that, sorry, they assume that you care if something bad happens to anyone, anywhere, and advise you to take some sort of action to ease or prevent their suffering. People react by questioning whether or not that stranger, someone is really suffering, or if they are suffering any more than, anywhere, than anyone else. They examine the circumstances of the alleged suffering and the motives of the people bringing the alleged suffering to light. Good point so far. They argue, sorry, <clears throat> sorry about that. I've got to drink some more of my tea here. They argue about the details and the proportion of the suffering and point. Remember how we were talking about victimhood earlier? Boom. They argue about the details and the proportion of the suffering and point out their own allegedly comparable suffering or the suffering of some person or people who are allegedly suffering more. Once you're arguing, they've already got you. Once you're arguing, you've agreed that you could care or would care that you should theoretically care given satisfactory evidence and argumentation. But what would they say if you stopped pretending to care at all? There would be no point in arguing about the details. Of course, as normal humans, we can always imagine ourselves in another human's position. We can't empathize with others. That's what makes movies and novels work. But we really, sorry, but we can't really care about the suffering of every man and woman on the planet. The idea that we should is insane and inhuman. So much of what people say they care about is just emotional pornography and can springboard them into an acrobatic display of moral and political posturing. I see all this propaganda online telling me what's not okay and how I'm supposed to feel about strangers and other groups of people. If they get me to agree that I care about these strangers and their unhappiness, I'm supposed to accept responsibility for that unhappiness and do whatever I can to alleviate it. This is all manipulation, a political plucking of one bit of human suffering out of an unimaginable expanse of human suffering all to serve this agenda or that one. Some kid in Africa probably got his head sawed off with a butter knife while some chick named Shoshina experienced a nightmare of catcalling in New York City. No one cared because they weren't told to care. Given their perceivable social class and sex, the guys who were expressing their admiration for Shoshina have probably experienced far more brutality than being propositioned for sex. And no one cared when it happened. Shoshina is just a squeaky wheel who wants to be lubricated with your tears. If we really cared about everyone, we would never even register feelings or microaggressions or first world problems because our brains would be blown out from watching third world ultra violence. We'd be watching and liking and sharing nonstop videos of prison rapes and basement executions and reading stories about sex slavery and child prostitution. We'd be outraged at the injustice of it all, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Those things are happening right now, and they more or less have been happening at varying levels for all of human history. If violence is actually decreasing worldwide, as Steven Pinker suggests, then it is probably in part because due to the high incarceration rents, high incarceration rates, and widespread fear of sanctioned violence threatened by increasingly omnipotent surveillance in police states in the first world. And omnipotent surveillance states are not okay. The reason that people care about the same thing at the same time, whatever today's outrage or viral video is, is that we all have to pick and choose. We decide if not consciously, then by our choices, that one person, one person's suffering is more important than another. Who we or maybe you, because I'm not talking about me here, decide to care about is completely arbitrary. Whatever human tragedy passes our eyes or ears, I don't care what happened to everyone everywhere. I don't care what happens to strangers. It's an admission that sounds barbaric and unspeakably taboo. It's taboo because people have 
have never been conned into believing that they're supposed to do something they can never do. Care equally about everyone all around the world. He goes on to say, I care about what happens to my friends, my family, and my tribe. I care even at this point, I am using to care very loosely about the kind of people I generally like, respect, or support. People who are like me or who are like the people I like. When someone registers an opinion or tells me I'm supposed to care about something, if I'm even thinking about caring, I look them up, I ask myself, I would be interested, sorry, and I ask myself if I would be interested in what this person had to say if they were sitting in the same room as me. You guys have heard me talk about, <clears throat> ask yourself if you would exchange lives with somebody dispensing advice to you. Similar sort of concept, right? Sometimes I would, usually I would not. I probably wouldn't even have a drink with them or give them a single moment of my time. If they're telling me that something bad happened to them, I have to admit that in most cases, I probably don't care. Why should I care about the suffering of the stranger instead of that one? If they're telling me that I should change, I ask why. If I'm the, sorry, if the only answer is to theory, theoretically prevent the alleged and future suffering of some other group of people I don't know or care about, then my answer is why bother? I'll change to some extent to gain honor in the eyes of men I respect personally or in the abstract, but why would I change to prevent the unhappiness of some stranger? This idea that we are all each other's shepherds and that we are all responsible for the happiness of all humankind is paralyzing nonsense. At best, it keeps men busy arguing about the things over which they have almost no control about. At worst, it makes men vulnerable to all sorts of manipulation by people who have already decided that they are disposable rubes. Now, this is exactly what the state does right now with this beer bug and everything that's built around this ecosystem that the pharma companies are all pushing. At worst, it makes men vulnerable to all sorts of manipulation. How many guys have been manipulated by all of this nonsense that we've heard in the last couple of years? Think about that. Anyway, I'll go on. Like naive, right? Like naive retirees giving away their savings to charity grifters or high living evangelists. Men end up giving away everything worth having to people who are ideologically incapable of even acknowledging their sacrifice. I'm not encouraging people to stop caring about anyone. I'm encouraging them to stop caring about everyone. If you say you love someone, you don't really love anyone. Love is a choice, a discriminatory act. You don't pick your team if you aren't willing to draw the line between who you care about and who you don't. Between us and them, then you'll be like all of these other suckers who care about whoever and whatever they click on every morning. We live in an us and them environment, folks. It's been that way throughout the entire human recorded history. It's always us versus them. It's always going to be that way. That's never going to change. No amount of globalism, liberalism, or any other ism is ever going to change the fact that humans are actually pretty freaking tribal. Care passionately, but discriminately but discriminately. And if you don't really care, then say it. I don't care. It's simple, but powerful. It's liberating, but also dangerous and heretical. The idea that we are all in this together and are working in good faith to solve the world's problems is an illusion that traps us in a crisscrossed, impenetrable web of synthetic yarn. If you pull that fuzzy pink string, that completely unwarranted assumption of universal goodwill, several, sorry, Civil society collapses in a Hobbesian war of all against all, where no one trusts anyone. When free from our attachments to everyone, everywhere, we find ourselves adrift in a staggering, confused mass of drooling, covious humanity. <clears throat> we can make sense of it all from and find our beginnings, and only when a form of discriminatory alliances and new tribes built on trust, common interests, and mutual admiration, instead of being bound to the great lie of love for all neighbors. Also the author of the book, The Way of Men. I highly recommend you guys check out his stuff. I don't care. That's just, you know, whatever it's like, oh, you know, you can solve it by doing this, that, or the other thing, or, you know, between four and six, Rich, if you taught kids how to work on cars, you know, you could, you, you too could save the world. That's kind of my feeling. I don't care, right? Like, I have people in my inner circle that I would rather dispense my time, resources, and energy on. Not, you know, some kid four doors down 
that doesn't have anybody home between 4 and 6 p.m. because their parents made some bad life cho choices. I don't care. Mental point of origin. It's a powerful thing once you understand it, right? 